There's sort of this unquestioned relationship between creativity and alcohol abuse. We've been continually fed the narrative that to be creative is to be internally tortured. And what follows is this endless cycle of substance abuse and self-destructive behavior to cope with the weight of one's genius. I think about this a lot because myself and many artists I know of have come to manifest the lifestyle we grew up romanticizing. You have this feeling like I am creative, therefore I am unstable. And furthermore, stability is correlated with a lack of creativity. As I get older, as I grow up, I wonder how much of this is just a narrative and how much of it's actually real. Us humans love to spin yarns about the source of our suffering, the source of our pain, even though it feels so cosmic and otherworldly and unique to you. It's just a well-documented physiological state in your brain. I want to at least attempt to understand why artists turn to alcohol and why artists are self-destructive. Now normally when writing a video like this, I would sit in isolation, circling the psychic drain, grappling with revelations and crippling self-doubt. But I think in this case, it's gonna be helpful to employ a second party, a sober second thought, if you will. Luckily, I had the opportunity to talk with someone who can help us shed light on this subject. My name is JJ McCullough and I am a YouTuber and writer. The thing with JJ is he's completely straight edge. And although not an artist in the traditional sense, he's still a creative and thorough thinker who has built a career while being entirely sober. When I was relatively young, uh, I sort of got it in my mind that I was never going to partake in what I perceived to be sort of the bad kid vices like alcohol and uh, tobacco and harder drugs. That was a conclusion I reached when I was relatively young and I guess I've just stuck with it for my entire life. You know, I'm now 38 years old and I have never had coffee, let alone alcohol or pot or cigarettes. Honestly, like it's not something that I've ever felt tempted by. And like the way I always justify it, the way that I sort of make my case for my own choice is that I don't believe the onus should be on me to justify why I haven't done something. I think that the onus is on the other people to make the case to me why I should partake in, you know, drugs or alcohol or whatever. And I just feel like no one has ever made a particularly persuasive argument as far as that goes. This is interesting because with the assumption that artists are self-destructive, it follows that there must be some sort of creative benefit, right? Other drugs have their importance in history, but it's very rare that someone solely abuses a drug without also abusing alcohol. Alcohol is like the building block for killing yourself. When you dig into it, there's actually a lot of widely held misconceptions about what alcohol does to us. Now, alcohol is a depressant in the sense that it limits brain function in almost all regards. But how exactly does that manifest? As someone continues to drink, the amount of information they can process begins to shrink, leaving them with a poor understanding of consequences and social cues. Why am I shaking so much? And really allowing them to only grasp what is directly in front of them. This effect is called myopia. Basically, it leaves you at the whim of whatever situation you happen to be in. This is why somebody can be drunk and energized in a situation like a club or a concert, while that same person can get drunk and depressed during a late night shoegaze fueled trauma dump with a good friend. You sort of lose yourself and become a manifestation of the moment you're in. And the issue here is that everything about the act of creative production pairs itself really well to alcohol use. The isolation, the fear of being misunderstood, and the fact that creativity requires an interior search into the self. A self that is just an illusion. Now, that's loaded as hell, but bear with me, because I'm going to explain. Producing a coherent body of work requires continuity with one's approach. And if coherence isn't important, then, then why wasn't Led Zeppelin a country band? Why didn't Jackson Pollock paint photorealistic portraits as well as abstract works? This is where myopia is important. The narrowing of your focus allows you to react to your own creations as if you have a continuous self. The self that we imagine exists in our day-to-day -day lives, of experiences and influences that really, when you think about it, tear you in all directions at all times. And when you really consider just how much we act, as a self, you really become aware of just how much intervention is required to create a self. For example, my name is Brogan. I'm a painter. I run a YouTube channel about art, and I like to wear all black. Nothing is stopping me from doing literally anything else that I want to. I have just chosen to wake up every day and make decisions and intervene to create continuity in my character. When you drink, this becomes much easier. You become a predictable and reactionary self, capable of staying in the moment and creating something coherent. I'm getting a little off topic, so now that you're all suicidal, let's go back to JJ. If it is, yeah, so if it's so common with creatives, how do you um, see the impact on the work? 
It's hard to say, you know, like it, it, it's hard for me to sort of say what the visible impact is in people's work. The, the way that I guess it manifests the most is I feel like it does have a kind of demotivational factor. I feel like I notice in some people's lives, like if they're really prone to, you know, getting high a lot or getting drunk a lot, you do kind of start to notice the degree to which that prevents them from being as productive as they might ordinarily be. Then, you know, you do start to pick up on the way that that is having an impact on their ability to be as prolific as they might otherwise be if they could sort of have their life in a little bit more order and not, say, party quite as much. Kind of in contrast, that's been the positives in your life from staying sober is you've maintained like a good schedule and like been productive? I, I, I would say so. Like, I like to think of myself as someone that's, you know, that's obviously kind of self-disciplined in this way. And self-discipline manifests in many different ways, right? So it's like, I, I think of myself as somebody who has good work habits, which is a product of the self-discipline. When I compare myself to, to other people whose lives, you know, in some ways seem a bit more disorganized or their ability to sort of churn out content, so to speak, is not quite as stable as my own, you know, I have to sort of reach the conclusion that maybe the fact that I'm not a big party guy, I'm not a big drinker, you know, that I have never had the experience of having plans upended because of, you know, things I chose to indulge in. What JJ mentions here brings us to the other end of the spectrum, as well as having to grapple with the actual difficulty of creating. Our widely accepted misconception on how the creative process works is its reliance on inspiration and motivation. You can't choose when to be motivated, and you can't choose what motivates you. Let's apply that analogy to fitness. If you're overweight and your goal is to lose 50 pounds, then you have strong motivation to do so. Then you'll lose the 50 pounds. When you lose the 50 pounds, the motivation no longer exists. And unless you have the structure and the discipline to maintain what you've lost, you'll gain it all back. And most do. About 90% actually. Creativity works the same way. How are you going to continue to be creative and productive without the discipline to do so? There really hasn't been a famous artist. There really has not been a genius creative who didn't put the time in, who didn't have discipline to do it. Like Hunter Thompson, somebody who is considered a lord of chaos, would rewrite entire books word for word just to practice writing. Francis Bacon would wake up every day at the same time, no matter how little sleep, no matter how hungover, and paint for hours. And although we really only see snippets of these people's lives in documentaries and on TV and in movies. But their day-to-day -day is very boring, it's very mundane, because that's what discipline is. If you don't give yourself the structure to create space for motivation and inspiration when it comes, then you're not gonna make it. I know this is something you mentioned to me privately. You said it's like, oh, it's like a privilege to be sober. So do you think that's, that holds true, that it's like a privilege to be sober and to like be able to have like a sober circle? I think it is. I think it is a privilege and I think it's I think it's rare and to this day it's still sort of something that I'm sort of seeking more than I have found. It is a privilege when you can be in spaces where you don't have to constantly explain yourself, where your lifestyle decisions can be taken for granted as being normal or sane or sensible and to have that sensation of being sort of around peers who sort of like and appreciate you for who you are and the decisions that you've made as opposed to just sort of questioning them as a deviation from some sort of norm. It's very satisfying to be in a place where your choices are, in fact, the norm. And most networking and socializing you're gonna do as an adult will be over alcohol. But your ability to separate yourself from that crowd and be able to surround yourself with people who are sober is really a huge privilege. If an artist you look up to wants to work with you and they wanna meet up over a drink, are you better off choosing to not drink that night for the sake of stability? Or are you gonna take the opportunity presented to you? Even in this case, I had the chance to meet JJ and this whole video came out of a sober circumstance. But this is probably the first time in my life I've had the opportunity to meet somebody where alcohol wasn't present. When presented with two choices, like to drink or not to drink, most people will either go with the crowd or react against it. And in both those circumstances, you're still kind of at the whim of alcohol, that it's still sort of controlling you in some way. I think we do this because the idea that things aren't always black and white is sort of terrifying. We like to build frameworks. At the end of the day, the core problem is the way we view time. We're sort of doomed with the constraint of only existing in the moment, with no real idea of how our current actions will affect our future. You can imagine, is there a version of yourself that does everything you want to do? And if so, is every deviation from that version of yourself a failure? How do we grow while also giving ourselves enough structure to grow? There's no real framework to approach this. The only advice you can actually learn from is to how to better react to the moment as it approaches you, not how to create the world as you want it to be. I'd be lying to myself if I told you I think you shouldn't drink, or that there is no benefit to the creative process. And I think most artists grapple with that, and that's why so many artists drink. If you're not reactionary, if you think freely, and you really try to do what's best for you, you try to give yourself the best cards possible, you're probably gonna be all right.